All right, welcome back to Waste Some Time with Jason Green. I am Jason Green, bringing you brand new interviews right here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Got to get to 10,000. We're already past uh, a million views in less than a year, so thank you for that. Uh, this is going to be a fun interview today. Do you guys know the zeros? I, I feel like there's a, uh, an audience that's very passionate about the zeros, and then there's some people maybe that we're going to expose to the zeros for the first time. This is one of these bands that had a big part in the Hollywood scene, and uh, and maybe some people overlooked it. Uh, and now, you know, I didn't think I'd ever see this band get back together, but 30 years since the release of their uh, legendary album, Four, Three, Two, One, the Zeros, uh, they're back. I wonder how long. Danny Dangerous, Sammy Sirius, right here after this. Just Okay, I'm excited to have the guys here. Let's bring them in. Here's Sammy Sirius. Hey, Sammy, how, how are you doing? doing? Good, thank What's you. You're up? the founding member. You started this thing uh, way back, I think in 82, is that right? That's correct, yeah. Okay, and then 80, also- well, actually, yeah, actually, a little bit before that, but you know, 82 was was uh, the start of it really, kind of. Yeah, that was way. the double O zeros, it was called at the time. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Dan yeah. and we're bringing Danny Dangerous, and Danny, was in the band for uh, you know that that the, that four three two one the zeros lineup is the lineup that everybody knows and loves. Yeah, yeah I was in I was in it in the mid nineties for a while too, and all, uh, we did a little short reunion in like two thousand five two thousand six, just like a couple one offs. We did that, and uh, and then I can't believe that, like you said, we're here today. Well, it's funny because uh, 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 none of you guys are exactly outspoken. And Sammy has a YouTube channel as well where, uh, and like I think during the pandemic, he was able to answer questions, play songs, and kind of have some fun. Um, and fans are more nostalgic than ever. And then younger people are getting turned on to the zeros. And But Sammy, when I hear you on your show, sometimes I think you might be Sammy angry because uh, uh, <laughs> some of these guys, I think, have driven you crazy. Sometimes, sometimes I am angry. <laughs> you know, that, that's one of my uh, that's one of my uh, talents. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, but you I did. Say, you say we're unspoken. The, like I know what you're saying. The other three guys, and that's just because we like to handle you know our stuff not on the internet. Like I've seen what you're saying. But I don't think for a second I haven't called Sam up and expressed my views or the other guys have. I'm like, you know, we, we have our conversations on our phone. It's just sometimes, you know, I, I'm not going to hold that against them. I just let it go. And I'm just happy to be here. You know, we're just trying to move forward. We're getting older. And it's just like it's time to stop. You know, even if you're not a functioning man and you look at it like I've been through so much of my life with Sammy Sirius, with Joe Normal, Mr. Insane or whatever, it's a point in time where you go like, Hey, you know, I love you, dude. You're like, <laughs> you're like a brother to me. Like, you know, like, why am I going to fight over little bullshit when I should be sitting there going like, you know, I have a million stories that me and him have been involved in together. You know what I mean? I know what he's going to think when just when he looks at something, because I've been around him so long as the other guys, you know what I mean? And well, I, I think that's that. really what we're, what we're, accomplished when we just reunited was yeah. a little bit of healing you know what i mean well we're gonna get to that healing but i saw that sammy on your show you were saying that bands fight that's what they do you've known each other that's right also. that's and right bands fight they, they they do fight and uh they do love each other and they do you know things together and uh they have good times they have bad times and uh you know, it's just one of those things, man, with the, with a lot of bands, you know, it has nothing to do with just us. It's um, I hear stories about other bands and uh, how they fight and, and they're way worse than our stories, <laughs> you know, so uh, I'm not worried about it. But when I get on the Internet and do my little shows or something like that, uh, pretty much they're just a fun show and stuff like that, you know, for the most part. Eight months ago, you got Sammy, you were hard on the guys. I thought there's no way. There's, and I'm not trying to break up the band. Uh, no, you can if you want. <laughs> that would actually <laughs> be funny. <laughs> like, you know there's what? Nothing, there's nothing anybody can say. Yeah. I had a band 
I had a band on the show called Bang Tango. I had the yeah. guitar player, Mark Knight, he's a great guy. And I asked him about the reunion of Bang Tango. They played one show. It happened to be yeah. at the Whiskey. After yeah. that show, the band broke up. <laughs> the reunion yeah. over. Bullet Boys, same story. They got back together. They played a show. They were going to play the Whiskey. And one of the guys didn't show up. They fought over whether or not they should play the Whiskey. Uh, the singer decided to play an acoustic gig. And then they broke up. So I don't want that to happen. I think... Uh, 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 also, when you do these, are, kind of are you saying you're a jinx, Jason, or what? <laughs> I'm, hoping it's not me. Yeah, oh. I'm hoping it's not me. I got to say, though, when you do a YouTube show or you talk or a podcast, you're yeah. trying to be entertaining and you're passing time. It's And when you're talking to an inanimate object later, you go, oh, maybe I should have said that one or this one. Well, well here, here's the thing about the zero. You have to is, do that. <laughs> there's, hold on. There's, there's a certain chemistry in the zeros that. That really is like, you know, it's like, like I told Danny this. It's like going to get a great slice of pizza, you know. You got, you know, it, it, you need all the ingredients to make it great, you know. So to find those ingredients with other people or do stuff like that, you know, it's just, where are you? I got a text coming. Uh, to find other <laughs> ingredients with people and stuff like that is it, like, you know, it's, it's, it's not that it's difficult. It's just that it isn't the guys, like, we grew up together, okay. I grew up with Joe Noro and Mr. Insane, okay. So there is a. Um, and to be honest with uh, you, my years of being in them, I kind of grew up with them as well. Yeah, you right. Know, Danny was there. Years, you know? We came out. We came out. We came out to Los Angeles in '87. Okay, and I think it was '87. And 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 uh, we met Danny, our bass player, who was who was originally in the band. His name was Frank, and and uh, Frank Cleaver. And we we he had to go home, and he went home. And then Danny joined the band. Then Frank and then. Cleaver. Frank Cleaver was a butcher, correct? Well, that was his name. We we named him Frank Cleaver, you know, because he, he worked. Actual... At a, but here, here's the story. Well, here's the story. We we you know, I found him at a, at a supermarket. And he was he was uh he was cutting meat in the back. No. <laughs> so so basically, he was cutting up the steaks and stuff. So that's how he got that name. But he was um, friends with he was friends with Joe Normal though. He was from New Jersey, right, Sam? Oh, he was just friends with he was friends with me and friends with Joe and everybody. You know, we hung out. And stuff like that. But the thing was, he knew Joe better than I did. But the whole was the whole thing was that we, we came out to Los Angeles, you know, and, and uh, he was really trying to be an actor more than a musician. But he played bass and he came out with us and then he decided to go home. OK, so so the thing was, then we found Danny and Danny came into the picture and then yeah. we went on our little um, conquering of Hollywood. Years and years of playing everywhere. Well, I, I wouldn't go years and years. It was basically it was. We, from '87. We got a uh, deal. By the time our record came out, it was '91. For in Hollywood yeah. terms, a five-year run where you're still headlining and doing stuff is is a is a successful club career. Wait, hold on, we gotta, let's pause but, everything because we're moving too fast. All right. First of all, we got to say that for people who think they might not know the zeros, I, I got to go back. New York City, Howard Stern show, 1984. Let's let's yeah. get that out of the way. Howard okay, Stern right. was on WNBC. Howard, yeah. yeah, I'll tell you the story about Howard Stern. Me, me and uh, Joe, we're working this. We're working a job, and we're doing a delivery job. Okay, and Howard would come on the radio at three three o'clock. So that was our that was our highlight of the day because we were driving around New York and, and New Jersey, delivering stuff to for this company, and um, he uh, would come on. So it was the highlight of our day. Him coming on, it, it would, you know, lighten up the day. So anyway, so Howard comes on. He goes, I want to get a theme song uh, going for my show. You know, he, he, he used to open with the Johnny Carson theme song all the time. So he would use that. And then I heard it. I said, you know what? I'm going to write a song for Howard, man. And we're going to do this. And, and we went into the studio for, with 50 bucks. It was actually $50 we, I, we had. And we went into the studio and um, we recorded the song. And then we brought it down to um, WNBC where he was at. And um, he, we thought when we, when we first got in there, they wouldn't let you up at Rockefeller Center. It was like real tight to security and stuff like that. So so what happened was <laughs> Jimmy, he, Mr. Insane, they call him Jimmy, but that's his real name. But anyway, Mr. Insane, he, 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 he figured out a way to get up there. He got on the phone onto the courtesy phone there and said that we were going to buy a two million. We, his name was J.R. Honeycutt from Texas. And we were gonna we were gonna buy uh, millions of dollars of advertising, 
and and they let us up. It was actually a good plan. So they let us up. We get up, we get in the elevator, and we're looking for the guy. And I, I had blonde hair back then, and, and the guys, he's there. Oh, hey, Rod Stewart's here. And it was it was him. We heard him piped in through the speakers, you know. So he was calling me Rod Stewart, you know, and stuff like that. And we were looking for him to give him the tape. So we couldn't find him. We didn't know what he looked like at that time. So right. we couldn't find right. him. And then there was this door that opened up with the, uh, through the um, wall. It, it was sealed off. You couldn't see the door because I guess I don't know if people, he didn't want people knowing where he was or whatever. But uh, the door opened up, and then the guy was on there talking, and I, I saw the guy with the speaker, and that was him. So then I threw the tape in there, and uh, he had another uh, guy besides Gary at that time, and um, he got the tape. Next thing you know, it was on the air, and he played it ever since, you know, all that time. You can know, you and, sing, uh, Can you sing the chorus so people know what we're talking about? Can I sing it? H yeah, sure. H-O-W-A-R-D-S-T-E-R-N. <laughs> Right? He's got a guitar, yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, here. H O W A R D S T E R N. H O W A R D S T E R N. Right? Yeah, absolutely. People, I think people, people remember that. People I think remember. people remember it. I'm a New Yorker. Yeah. I grew up listening yeah. to Howard Stern. Heard that song a million times. It later yeah. when I became familiar with the zeros, because the zeros crossed out of punk and glam uh, at the same yeah, time. We were, yeah, we were banned at crossed over between CBGBs and Great Gildersleeves back then in New York. Do you remember those two clubs? Sure. I, I, I was, Gildersleeves <laughs> before my time, but I remember it. Yeah, yeah. So Great, Great Gildersleeves is more like the glam club, you know, rock and roll, New York dolls, and CBGBs is more like the punk club. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we would go through that those two clubs back and forth. They were right next to each other. They were actually a block away. So then, and then, um, you know, then the, you had the uh, Webster Hall, you had Ritz, and you had all those places. I think the Ritz became the Webster Hall. But then we played all those places over there. And then um, then we went to England after that Stern thing. So that was yeah. that. Oh. You, I'm a fan of a good gimmick. The Zeros yeah. have had more than one good gimmicks, okay? You guys... Uh, yeah. You guys hustle. And we'll get into some of them. I love, I love it. it the, the business sense is great. And, uh, okay, so I wanted to make sure, because I, I bet a lot of people who've watched Howard Stern have ha heard that song and didn't realize it was a Zeros, because he stopped, call, he was excited in the beginning, but as the show went on, he'd stop mentioning the name of the band. So uh, Yeah, well, we got, we got upset. Better. We got upset with him about that, you know what I mean? And we had like a little fall, well, I wouldn't say a little falling out, we had a falling out, okay, just like a lot of people do with Howard, I don't know why, but, uh, you know, we had a falling out and, um, you know, we had a contract and, uh, you know, uh, I he was going to XRK. He got fired from NBC and that was a big thing. And he had he had uh, a deal with us to use the song on WNBC only. Right. So the thing was, when he went to XRK, he had to call me up and he gets on the phone with me and I go and he goes, Sammy, I'm going to go on the XRK. I go, Howard, you don't even mention our name when someone calls up. You don't even give us any credit. You know, oh, don't worry about it, man. This is big time. This is big time now, you know, and all this stuff. And then he goes, I'm going to put a loop in the song, you know, like where it says, ladies and gentlemen, the double zeros, which he did. And I gave him the song again. And we had a six month contract. And then what happened was after the six months was up, I did not hear from Howard. OK, I didn't hear from anybody. And he kept playing the song. So then it was like I was trying to get a hold of him and say, what's going on? You know, what's going on? And he um, didn't answer us or anything. And he kind of kept playing the song. And he played it for the next 20 years. And we just basically kind of went to London. We went over to England. We said, forget about it. You know, he doesn't want to deal with this and stuff like that. And um, I thought, Sam, you know, was some, I, Sam, I thought there was some like show that you wanted to play. And he had some. Yeah, other well, we had, we had, he had a show. At, he had a show at the Ritz. And um, we tried to call him about it because he had a band called Pig Vomit. And I remember they, they got to do the song and he wanted us to give them permission to do the song, which they did do the song, you know, uh, and I did. I was at the show. So, like, I, you know, the whole thing was that, you know, the guy was singing just like me and stuff. So it was pretty it was pretty weird, you know, to see this guy up there. But he didn't he didn't let anybody know that it wasn't our band. So I think people got confused that it was some our band, but it was really some other band, you know. So that's that's what happened. That's why we got very angry with him. And stuff on that on that gig, but um, well, and then no, it's all it's all good, of, I guess. You kind of have a little uh, 
Sammy, you're kind of you got a little PT Barnum in you, I think. You, uh, you, yeah. you had a little rivalry. You had a little Howard St St Obviously, I, look, I'm not, am I the only one? No, I'm not. So I don't feel bad, you know. So it's just like uh, you know, a lot of people have falling outs with Stern, and and you know that was just the thing that just went sour, and 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 kind of like it was cool, you know. And he still he, he was playing the song for 20 years, you know. After that, after the uh, the six month deal ran out and stuff like that, so. And a lot of people don't know what happened. What? Yeah, it is. It's yeah. Part of history. This was a different house. It's a part of his history. It's a part of his history. And he kind of like, you know, I kind of like, um, we were kind of upset about it. You know, we're, we're no, he's he, right, though. This is a different, a different Howard Stern. So. Yeah, this was, and, and I, you know, you can listen to the recording. I think it's on Sammy's YouTube channel, but you can hear Howard when he first gets the tape. And this is the different Howard Stern. This is not the guy who goes, uh, so, Robin, this weekend I was out uh, at the park with my wife. This was the Howard who was like, "Oh my God, guys, this is my band." You know, he had, he talked in a higher voice and. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, he loved he loved the band. You know, he loved the band. He loved the song, and it just like went it went south. Uh, you know, for what what whatever reason it was, you know, with that whole thing after NBC he went to XRK and uh, you know, we had the contract and I just never heard from him anymore. And, and instead of like, you know, going after him, getting a lawyer and stuff like that, I just tried to be real nice about it because I didn't want him to ruin my career. <laughs> you know, so it was like it was kind of on that angle, kind of on that angle. So I, I we, we packed up and went to London and we, we hit it off over there and stuff like that. So, yeah. OK, you know. so we got Howard Stern out of the way. People watching it now are going, holy shit, I've heard that song, you know. Um, yeah. Okay, now let's move to LA. I want to talk about some of the well, first. You uh, got to go to England. The band oh, went yeah. to England, and there's actually a story there, like hanging okay. with some legendary bands. And Sam, you should need to tell them. You know, they were managed by the owners of the Marquee. They headlined the Marquee, the Hippodrome. They played yeah. with bands like Flesh for Lulu, Dogs to Moor. They were hanging out with Anti Rocks. Like there was a weird little six month this area there where the Zeros were, you know, in the UK doing what bands like Twisted Sister did, Stray Cats did, going there to make it. And uh, this was... Luckily, luckily I got Danny because my memory isn't that good, but he, he really <laughs> I, I nailed it. a lot of these stories, so yeah, I'm he just nailed helping it. him along. So you might, yeah. Sam, spill him into well, that. Well, 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 we went over to England. We did Dan the Twisted Sister. They were there. We, we used to go, I, used to, I used to go see Twisted Sister in New York. Yeah, I think everybody went to see Twisted Sister over, back Sam in that day. Sam okay. loves these times. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, D. Snyder was like was great, and the whole band was great, and everything was great about those guys, you know. And and you know, um, we we went to England. They went over to England. We went over to England because in Jersey, okay, let, let's let's talk about New Jersey for a second. You you got to play covers in New Jersey, okay? And if you're an original band, you're not gonna be able to play original music in New Jersey, okay? That's just the way it was back then. And then you, you had to go over to New York. Um, you know, you had to play tracks. You had to play, you know, all the other places. But but then again, in, in London, okay, in England, in New York, it was 21 and over, right? So so the thing was, you had this whole danceateria crowd that was going around at that time. And it was more like in a dance kind of thing. So the Zeros really kind of fit more, you know, over in London when, you know, Twisted Sister went so and, and Stray Cats and all that stuff went went over there but you know we their, went they over they sold all their belongings they got a one way ticket and they went to England that's the kind of stuff young dreams are made of and they didn't know yeah. anybody they didn't know where to go where to sleep it's yeah. some of the uh, Joe tells me the Joe Normal tells me these stories all the time as well as Sam and you can tell it really impacted their lives that they actually started succeeding and they went for a strong 6 month run and when they were headlining their visas ran up and they had to make yeah. a decision to come home and it was like heartbreaking for them. Danny Danny needs to write the book, okay? Because he he pretty much nailed it. So the I'm thing is our visas like ran out. The guys at the marquee were the guys at the marquee were managing us, okay? They man they were managing us and helping us out. And then what happened was our visas ran out and they wanted us to go over to France to renew them. They said, hey just jump over to France. And then that was when the bass player he had to go back to the United States because he had a problem with his family. And the thing was um we had a choice to make there. You either go to France or either come over to Los Angeles. And that's where we bridged the gap over to Los Angeles and uh, from, from England. And, uh, but, but we were very uh, popular in England and it was very good over there for us. And, uh, but 
I, I do say like, you know, we should have stayed there, but at the same time, there was such a scene happening in Los Angeles that we came out here too. So right. it was actually, you know, coming out to Los Angeles was, was a good thing. Yeah. And, and so that's where they shortened the name. Yeah. I didn't realize but that's where they shortened the name. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, right, Sam? What? What's that? That's where you shorten the name of school. When you, you when you moved to LA. Oh yeah. Well, what happened? Here's here's the, here's the name. Here's the name thing. Okay. Right. There, we we come over as the double O zeros, and we start getting popular in Los Angeles, and everybody starts calling us the zeros. Okay. So then we're sitting there calling ourselves the zeros. So I'm sitting there going, okay, well, my, it's like the Rolling Stones. You know, I always say this as it's a perfect example. The Rolling Stones, people call them the Stones. Okay. So so the thing was, they call us the zeros, and um, the name started sticking. And then, like, you know, everybody started calling us that. And then they started billing us as that. Even though we weren't that, they started billing us as that. And then it started catching on. And people started getting bigger and bigger. And then people started coming to us. And, and they started saying, hey, you know what? The, the, the older crowd, there was, like, an older kind of crowd in, in Los Angeles. And they, they knew of the band from 1977 called The Zeros. You go, hey, you know what? There was a band called The Zeros. Are you them? And, and, and like, what's going on? There, there was a band there. And you'd be honest I, go, I don't know. That. Who is this band? What? In fact, the only one person ever said that to me was uh, I used to get my amps fixed by a legendary <laughs> by the guy in X. I looked up to named Billy Zoom from X. And uh, yeah. he lived kind of by me in Hollywood when he lived here. And he's the only guy that ever said, why are you calling yourselves this band? I go, well, I, I joined the band and they were called that. But he goes, well, there was another band back in the day. I go, oh, we did a little investigation, see that there's a, a little single. But you look at me and go, okay, a band, a couple, been around a couple years. And they break up, and I was single. You don't really those, think about it. Yeah, and those guys gave up the mark, though. They were they weren't in a band anymore. They gave up the mark, and they gave they up the yeah. mark. Sammy Sammy owns the mark to this day. He he owns the zeros, and and I personally. Uh oh. Where now you what go? are we going to do, Sammy? We lost. It. He got right, right in the middle, right in the middle of his big zero story. But uh, yeah, I think you but, know this one though. Yeah, I do know this one. Well, anyway, anyway, the 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 the. We we saw the zeros in the clubs. Okay, they were coming. They were coming around, seeing us play. So so the thing was, the the guy comes up to us and he goes, "Hey, you know, I was in the zeros." I go, "Oh, cause, you know, we heard people talking about them and and telling us about them." So I I, I said, um, "Oh, you're in that band?" He goes, "Yeah, we broke up already, and I'm doing like um, he goes, we broke up years ago, you know, like 15 years ago." He was saying. And I think it was Elvez. The guy's name was Elvez, and he, right. got, he Elvez got, was kind. Of, Elvez kind of had his own popular thing. He, he was had. Doing, he was doing an Elvis thing. He was doing Elvis thing. And he told me. He said. He goes. Yeah. He goes. We're not playing with that name anymore, and everything else. I go. That's cool. Because I, I said we're coming out with a record, and uh, you know, I hope it don't cause any problems with any. Oh no, everything's fine. You know, just, and they were nice, very nice guys. And and you know I even like their music. I I listen to their music on the thing because because of all the, the thing with the zeros and us and everything else. So yeah. the whole yeah. with the two names and everything else. So it's like um they started resurfacing, you know, and calling themselves the zeros. And our record company called them up and said, "Hey, you got to call yourselves the zero seventy seven because you forfeited the name and basically you don't you don't own it and this and that." So they said, "Fine, you know, everything was fine." So um they were using zero seventy seven and stuff like that. But, um, you know, it's just it's just a matter of, you know, it's it's like the name is the name and we were using it. And it's it's you know, we own the name. It's our name. But, you know, they go out and now they're still you now they're using the name again. And uh, but they use the 77, you know, they tag the 77 on there, which is fine. And, and that was our agreement. And that's that, you know, but um, it, it, it worked. It worked in, to benefit both of us, really, because, as I say, like we, we did shows and, and we had people coming to see them and they got stuck seeing us. And then, you know, people went over to see them and they got stuck seeing that. You know what I mean? So it was like and they like both bands because we're both kind of like um, kind of you know, punk. funky. Yeah, yeah we're kind of funky bands. So we're, it's both it's basically the similar similar music kind of thing, you know, in a way. And um, and, you know, it kind of fits. We we I, we could actually play together a show and, and and it would totally work, you know what I mean? But you know, I have nothing I have nothing against those guys. They're great guys, and um, you know, I like their stuff. And you know, it's just that, you know, what are you gonna do? That's just the history of the band. You know, they had the band. They had the name of '77. They dropped it. They broke up, and they, you know, and everything else. So 
it was like that. So that's what happened. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, because it is. If you go to Wikipedia or you go wherever, uh, you will see yeah. the other zeros and uh, yeah, you... yeah. Well, that's so, because we we weren't playing around, and basically they were playing around and stuff like that. And the internet goes by. I think the internet goes by um, hits or something like that. So if someone gets more hits than you or something like that, they get the top top feed of the um, you know when when you um, go into the um, internet or something like that. Yeah. But you know, we used to we used to be on on top there when we were playing and then, you know, the band kind of split up with the, with the guys and, and, you know, I, I continued on with the band, you know, with different members and different stuff. And I cut the world world album and I cut a bunch of albums, you know, continuing on as the zeros and everything. And, you know, I wrote all the songs for the zeros. So, um, you know, basically it was just kind of like that, you know, before we get to that and I'm look, I'm showing a picture of, uh, you know, the, the purple image. When does the yeah. purple begin? Uh, it begins when when uh, uh, we threw a bottle. We were in a fight, and we threw a bottle of grape juice on uh, Mister Insane's head. No, that's just one of the jokes. It's great said. if that was a true story. <laughs> it's actually a true. Story. No, anyway. So what happened was I dyed my hair purple. Okay, I dyed my hair purple, and it was, used to be blonde. Okay, and and for some reason, when when the roots came in with the blonde, you know what I mean? It was like you had to keep dyeing your hair to get it. And I was there like, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to do my hair purple. So for know? some wacky reason, my phone just overheated. So. Right. Sammy said everything. Did it blow up? <laughs> yeah, I finished your zero story. So anyway. Um, so, so We're so, talking uh, about how the purple began. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. When I actually first saw the zeros, they had, uh, for me personally, but they, they had blonde hair. And uh, yeah. I remember, I'll never oh. forget that day. Like, have you ever had tunnel vision where you feel that you need, you're supposed to be somewhere? You know what I mean? Like I was sitting there at this place called White Trash A Go Go, and my roommate, this lady in Chris Armour, this uh, girl, her and her friends were going down there to see this band called Demolition Gorgalore, which had a, a couple, you know, it's a like underground band. And somehow they didn't show up, and I'm sitting there, and it's really late at night. There's like 20 people there, and I'm like, oh, I guess I'm gonna go home. And a day before that, this. Uh, a couple of days before that, this guy told me this band he saw at Madame Wong's and he was telling me about this band. And he was like, oh, my God, they wore these little nipples, uh, ouch things, and they have blonde hair. They were amazing. So I sit there and when I see the ouch little nipple things and their things like, oh, this is that band. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to watch this. I'm going to wait. So they, the, you know, instead of big drums, everything was big in Los Angeles. But the zeros, everything was small. The amps were small. It was like the drummer played a real small jazz kit, and they walk in. You want to carry any swear, crap. That's what it was. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna kiss his ass because he's right here. Because we have our fights and stuff. You, you should. But not. I'm gonna tell you right now. I know he's gonna say that. But the guitar player was so fucking amazing. The drummer was so amazing, and Sam was the songs. They were like. Beatles meets everything I wanted to do in life was in that band. <clears throat> and I looked at it and I knew that I belonged in that band. It's kooky as the sounds. I'm an animated person. You know what I mean? And I saw the cartooniness in him and I saw this, this doesn't need a guy with a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. That looks like a model on base. This needs a, a goofy. This needs me. I couldn't believe it. And I couldn't believe later on the um, when I had my chance to uh, when they called me up going, well, now, you know, do you want to do this? <laughs> well, when <laughs> did you develop? Thing. You went, you know, you you're famous for the purple mohawk. When does that come about? Um, I didn't know anything about makeup or glam. Like I would never wear spandex or a lot of the poodle hair metal bands at the time. I was really into the new wave of British heavy metal and, and some of that stuff and a lot of the Steeler. punk bands, but I wouldn't like uh, I wouldn't ever do that. But I had to with the with with the zeros. I just knew that was the case. So I joined them and you could see all the earlier photos. Joe did my hair, Joe did my makeup, and then I got lucky. I my girlfriend at the I met a girl, she became my girlfriend. My hey, I got a girlfriend, you know what I mean? But she was a hairdresser. And then I instantly was like showing her pictures of like GBH uh, and um, Daniel Ash from uh, Bauhaus. Love and Rock. It's like, I want my hair like this. 
you know, can you do it like this? Not so metally, you know what I mean? And she did. She showed me how to do it. She showed me with my, and the second I did that, I know this is a little kooky, but I look at it and it was kind of like when I had the makeup on, I looked, I kind of looked like, kind of like the Joker, you know what I mean? And like a lot of people said that. And I looked at it like kind of like the addicts, the band, you know what I mean? And I was like, oh, so I have really pointy eyebrows when I have makeups on. And slowly but surely, I kind of looked at this thing with a mix and match of like, you know, a jacket from like a Bunny Carlos guy, you know what I mean? Clad picnic tables and mixed and matched and so far became my own, my own guy, you know what I mean? And a lot of people will say later, like, oh, you know, he looks like this guy or this guy. Like, no, that was just me. You know, grabbing from influences like a Ray Davies thing, or a, you know what I mean. Danny's you know, Danny's really Liberace's kid. But that <laughs> that image really helped us. Sam crossed over with that too. He started wearing some old jackets and stuff, and it was like you had the glam rocker, lat rockers, you know, because Joe is a very hardcore glam rocker, and like it balanced it out a little. You started having different personalities in the band, and that those personalities. You know, the crowds of Los Angeles, we played in front of different people, just kind of ventured towards what they were into. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, we were out of New York. We were out of New York. So, we, you know, the Ramones and stuff like that. Oh, it's the street huge. Vibe, the street vibe was was very, you know, dominating yeah. over there. And we brought that over. We brought that over. We had the leather jackets. We had we had the he paint. We, we were the first ones to paint our faces on the back of the jackets. He okay? was. Sam did we that. The first I'll never forget myself. We had we had we had the we had the leather jackets. We painted our faces on, and we'd go out to the clubs, and then find out, you know, everybody would ask us where we got them. And then there was a, um, you know, we used to go down Carnaby Street in England and stuff like that. And they they had in Kensington Market. There was a lot of cool stuff over there. And um, you know, we basically were like kind of like a cross between you know a glam thing with a punk thing, but with a heavy metal thing. So but, and, you know, there was still that old glam thing there, the Bowie. Uh, yeah, Slade kind of sweetie vibe there, and yeah, well, we were always into the heavy. We were into the heavy rock. I mean, we were we were always into the heavy rock, and, and we loved the Pistols, you know, and stuff like that. And then we, you know, Cheap Trick and the Who and and all those bands. I mean, um, we were, um, you know, we used to, um, you know, over we used to see all those bands and everything, and and you know that that was part of our gig, like trying to, um, you know, just to have that vibe, you know. With and our being band, true to you know? who we were, like as we started playing and getting like noticed and stuff, and getting luckily for us, for some wacky reason, we kind of fell into like the there's the gun that like the Guns and Roses, L.A. Guns, Jet Boy, Faster Pussycat were like the four bands of this certain scene. Faster Pussycat, uh, I know Tammy since I've been like 16 years old, so like coming out of San Diego, and I know like those bands were like part of a certain scene. And somehow they kind of not so much the guns, but the more LA guns. And, you know, like they brought us in like this, like little brother bands. We were starting to open shows, Jet Boy, and we fell into opening for these bands. And it got to the point when guns took off. My first show at the, for the Zeros was it was uh, opening up for Guns N' Roses at the Coconut Teaser. We were direct support and it was for a, uh, a memorial for the um, uh, the Jet Boys bass player passed away, and we were, it was like a memorial for him. And we also played with them at the Whiskey A Go Go. It was uh, like Guns N' Roses, Ellie Guns, Faster Pussycat, us, and another band. We, we were in that scene. So when that scene took off, we got lucky. You know what I mean? Because when LA Guns took off, they took us up the, their, their, their chain. You know, Tracy was a big, you know, even before Tracy came back from New York and it was like Robert Stoddard, Paul Mars, we would know them, you know. And, uh, then when Tracy came in, he liked us and he kind of adopted us. And we opened for them all the way up their rise, like through the country club into the palace and to the palace again. And, uh, you know, the band played the troubadour with faster pussycat. It was like, and then all of a sudden a metal band started adopting us like Janie Lane from Warren. He had us open for him at the, uh, at, for them and the band at, uh, the Santa Monica civic. I mean, you know, our band has a story to tell. There's other zeros that bands that call themselves the zeros, and that's fine. But our what we're trying to like our story. We have a story too. You know what I mean? And it's important. And is thank there, you for having us on today, dude. Oh, of course. It, yeah. Is there truth that there could be a documentary coming? 
we, we I had I had I had a documentary got coming up in the works, but I was trying to get the guys to do it and and go back and forth with them and stuff like that. But this was before we got together for this reunion yeah. show. So I don't I don't know I don't know what's going to happen with that. There is a big history with this band. I mean, um, I don't know where I would take it from. I don't know if I take it right from the very beginning, which is which is pretty interesting. You know, the very beginning is very interesting about this band and uh, what we did and actually how, how we uh, survived to try and get through that. And then, um, you know, and take it all the way up to 90, 92 or take it past that or whatever. You could go, what probably go to 97. I'd yeah, love to but, see you guys start at the reunion and then tell it backwards. You know, uh, that reunion yeah, right. was that reunion. Yeah. Like it was such a success and we couldn't even believe it, but no, there was a lot of healing going on in that reunion. And well, we'll get there. let's not, let's not heal just yet. We still got some <laughs> to get through. Uh, I'm showing four, three, two, one, the zeros. If you guys haven't heard this record, you got to check it out. There is a, uh, this pink, uh, purple vinyl, right? That it's been, there's different versions of the record available. Well, they're working on a vinyl now, I think, right? So, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to work on a vinyl album, purple vinyl album, you know, That's and trying to get that together. Yeah. Trying to get that together and, and, and get it maybe a little bit of a tour going so people could see us out of state and stuff like that. You know, cause a lot of people can't get to see us. We, we're basically like a Los Angeles kind of thing now. And, um, I was touring around for a while, you know, up, up to 97, uh, basically, you know, went back out to 2000 and, and then, you know, kind of like started just recording and stuff like that, which I'm going to be making a new solo record pretty soon, actually, uh, at Hit Track Studios. Right, Jason? You know that. You know Tom, That's right? Where I met you. I first met Sammy at Hit yeah, Track right. Studios here in Las Vegas. Yeah. And Sammy sang background vocals on a Christmas record we put out for charity. That for yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a yeah. lot of fun. And I was excited. Also, 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 we did the Motorhead song at the, at the, at the show, remember? That's right. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. yeah I was excited yeah. because coming from New York, I'm a little bit younger. I, uh, I knew the legend of the Zeros. And to see, you know, and to meet you and hear these stories. And even today, there's some of these things like the, your time in England that I didn't realize. And so, as you're saying, there's a story to be told. This is a record yeah. that if you're a fan of punk rock and you're a fan of glam punk, you're really going to love it. Listen, two-minute songs, three-minute songs, no song should be much longer than that. You get to yeah. it, and it's a lot of fun, and there's another one but after we had, that. We had a lot of rock songs, too. It wasn't just punky. Like, the good thing about the Zeros where they had, you know, he wrote really good ballads and stuff, too. Like, we had, we crossed around, like, because we're record store nerds, you know what I mean? So it'd be like, mm -hmm. we were trying to not just be a punk fan. That's important to say, because... That really ended up biting us a little bit in the ass when we were trying to get a record deal because people would say, how can we market you? You know, would you be into dyeing your hair black and looking a little sleazy like what's going on right now on the scene? Well, well wait, that's not us. You know, we're we're this zany kind of fun band. We want to stay that way. You know what I mean? With good songwriting. The one, the, one th the one thing about the band was we were able, you know, when we got out to Los Angeles, we were able to cross over from – uh, playing uh, like, you know, a club like Scream, which was like a darker element club. You know what I mean? It had like a dark vibe to it. Uh, you know, there was um, Stafford, White Trash A Go Go. Yeah, right. Uh, right. White Trash. We, no we, we used to play all this. And we did different shows. Okay. We did, we did different shows. It wasn't like we just played one show. So we had like, we had like four or five shows under our belt with different songs. And each, right. each, um, each club all that we played, we, we we would we would take you know what we needed what what show we needed to do to actually fit the the you know criteria of the club so i mean it was like just like you know and, and you know then we then we were playing the whiskey we we're on the sunset strip we were doing stuff there so we're a very versatile band we we you know um we have a lot of, i have a lot of songs that that you know i wrote over the years that that basically you know some punk songs some glam songs some some stuff like that and um you know crosses over for sure yeah it crosses well. over but 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 i find out you know i find out that the the goth rockers like the stuff that we do that's punk and and uh we the punk rock like the, like the goth stuff so so it was a real good it was a real good mix of uh people who used to come see our shows you know yeah so well, well, all right that, that, well, that was a very big <laughs> thing you mentioned you mentioned the whiskey i can't let yeah. this go uh, like I said, I love a good gimmick. There is no yeah. better gimmick. Restless <laughs> Records puts out the four, three, two, one, the zeros record. Okay, 
Right. And yeah. everybody should know the story of the whiskey being painted purple. Now, right. I have been waiting ages to ask you this question, okay? Ages. Yeah. And no one seems to know anything about it, but I've heard this, and you tell me if it's true, and if it is, okay. it'll be exclusive. Story I heard is that Prince was going to do a, an appearance or some sort of residency at the Whiskey. <laughs> Danny's saying no already. Let me finish for his Diamonds and Pearls record. And yeah. something got nixed. He backed out at the last second, and the Zeros had the smart enough sense to cash in on it. Is that not true? That is not true. true. I have to say not that is true. Danny's wagging his head. Danny's wagging his head, no. Here's but that is think. true. For the sake I, of showbiz, for the sake of showbiz, that is true. No, okay, I'm only that's kidding. Not true. No. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Don't don't get all crazy. Don't get all crazy. I'm, I'm telling I'm telling him it's not true. I'm just playing around. They got the, but, the, but, the whiskey. But it is it is, you know, it is a good story. It is a good story. It is. A, it's got to tell the truth. Like it no, was so, will, yeah. Look, we will. The actual the fact that the whiskey themselves allowed us to our record company to do that, I think would be a distrust to say that story is true because they really did. Danny, I'm only, I'm only, I'm only, yes I'm only that. kidding. I'm yeah, only kidding. I, now, I, I feel like one of you guys. Yes is, I feel like Danny, one of you guys. Danny, I, I don't have the name yourself. Sammy Serious for nothing because Danny Sorry. takes me very serious. Everything I, I say. Go ahead, the finish your story. Go -Go to us meant everything. Like to me individually as a kid growing up my dream was to go could play this place two hours from my house to sam he also knew when he moved here to headline the whiskey when you're a true headliner meaning you you know which we were to that club to that it was such hard like it doesn't happen to everybody and when they when our record company approached them to do that and they said yes that was like they no other band had done that before no other band and it was so like that they let us do this to this iconic place that's still here today. They have really taken us under their wing as far as even today. We're part of their legacy, as they've said to us, and they're a big part of ours. And even this reunion show, like they are the ones that said, hey, you're going to come here. You're going to play here and people are going to love it. And we're thinking, like, who's going to come who's gonna be there it's been 30 years but it's sold out. well so what, i gotta i gotta i gotta say this because because our fans are the most loyal dedicated fans on the planet I, I mean all through the years even when the band was disbanded and all that and i was i was moving on with other stuff and 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 continuing with other lineups they all stayed behind me very um they were very dedicated yeah. to the zeros. Yeah. When I played they all, uh, other bands, they all stay behind me. me too. <laughs> they all stay behind me, and, and they all wanted they all wanted to, to see the zeros, and they all wanted to see the Hollywood lineup. You know that 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 played the whiskey and stuff like that. So when we finally announced that we were going to do this show, they all they all like I was touring around, and I played other states and stuff like that. So there was people that actually flew out from other states that used to see the band out of state and come see the whiskey show. You know, so uh, so that was very uh, flattering, and um, we're talking about the thirtieth anniversary. I yeah, gotta say, yeah. Sammy, I know Danny's very passionate. Is he protecting kayfabe here? No, is he, is he, like I'm, I'm, I'm legitimately telling you the truth, and the reality is, it, it wasn't just the whiskey. Like once the whiskey did that, it was such a big deal that Len Fagan down at the uh, Coconut Teaser, which was a, a a club down on Crescent Heights and Sunset, and that's where. Uh, they were a, a big rock club at the time as well. And he actually contacted us and said, hey, we want to do the same thing. So okay. here we are, a have band with a record out. Have and you we heard have that well, Prince? Let, 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 me, let me clarify this. Let, Len Fagan wanted to do our video. We, had, we were coming out with a video, okay, uh, of uh, Love's Not Fair. And Len Fagan approached me and said, he goes, look, we got to do the video release party here. You did the record release party at the Whiskey. You got to do the video release party because we used to play the teaser all the time, yeah, yeah. you know, and and, and uh, we were very um, – we, we used to do the uh, all the jams there and everything else. So when, when, Len, when Len approached me on it, he said, look, we're going to put your name on the, on the chimney, you know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, everybody from Crest Heights is going to come and see uh, – you know, drive up. And it was really, it was really a great thing that, that he did. He was very behind us. He loved the band, and he was always behind us. And um, yeah, you know, was, was very, yeah, very, very uh, 
So Daddy you look at that, sure. you got four clubs on the strip. You got the teaser, the whiskey, the Roxy, Gazaris. Okay, let's throw the Viper room in, right? The Viper. So five clubs, whiskey being probably the the most, Troubadour. definitely the most prominent one. And two of those clubs out of five have painted the place purple and put our logo on it. That is a, a well, test. We would have probably had, we, we, were, we were working on the, the strip from, from the, the teaser all the way up to Gill's Liquor, like all the way up to that, uh, to the key club there. What it used to be Gazari's, we were going to paint the pavement purple, sparkly <laughs> purple. The pavement was going to be purple. That was our next. That didn't, that didn't happen. That was our next. That was our next thing, Jason. So, so you know, that was our next. This is that was our next. But well, we also had a purple car. We had the Zero Mobile. Yeah, Zero right. Mobile, which you guys have. To, did you make toys? Zero Mobile toys? I, or you I was. No, I was. I was. No good. way. No way. We, we did. I did. I oh, made. Did? I made a, a replica of a, a Zero Mobile, which I was gonna. Which I was gonna. Uh, you know, manufacture, put out. It was, uh, but I couldn't figure out whether to make it a foot long or, or like just like a Hot Wheels car. Yeah, you know like what I mean. Matchbox. But yeah, but I still, yeah, Matchbox car because I wanted to be, I wanted people to be able to hang it from the uh, rearview mirror. You know, that if it was too big, I, I didn't want it to be that way. So, the so fans, the thing was, the fans what? are zero. The fans are called zero mongers. You've got the yeah. zero mobile. You've got the purple hair. This is 1991 when this begins, and you know this when it takes off. I should say. And this yeah. is a competitive year, you know, uh, obviously, in Hollywood. I and know where so, you're going right now. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not going to give you the typical grunge question, that, uh, but I'm thinking. That's okay. You, you can give it to us. It's all right. But I'm thinking it's such a I don't believe I don't believe grunge killed it, okay? That, that's just my opinion. It I kind of think it let a little air I just, out of the I just think it got, it got big, okay? And there was nothing new to really overcome it. You know what I mean? And, and then it started, the, the record companies really run to blame because they started capitalizing on all the bands coming out of Seattle. So so really, if, if they found out about, uh, if there was other bands that were able to wedge themselves in, I think it would have been a lot better. But, but you um, guys had something different is kind of what I'm saying. That's, I'm what, saying. that's what I think. You know, that's while what the I hair th bands were coming, you know, you know, uh, uh, offense to that, uh, you know, but the, as they're coming out and there's copying and copying and copying and copying and you have your eighth rate and now you have, you know, really you guys had something different. And like, and I do understand that maybe the punk thing hurt in a way that that label, because maybe it is separating you, but you know, you in a world where you can't stand out, everybody remembers the zeros. I have somebody on this show every day who's from that scene. Everybody yeah. knows. I don't know what you <laughs> Well, the one th the one thing about us is that we were the original, original. You know what I mean? So they're really we weren't really copying anybody or anything. So we were our own thing. Yeah, we didn't so, jump on somebody. We did, it was like a genre of music became popular, and we're jumped on the fucking coattails of it. We still literally slugged it out. We created our own. A big thing for us was we go play the suburbs. Like our manager put us in a place called the Country Club in uh, the Valley of uh here in los angeles and we played so many shows there and we these young because uh, you know this was an all ages club and a lot of times the zeros would play underground clubs that were 21 and over so we play the valley and we get all these young kids that now are starting to like where do i get my hair color like they're like you know they're into the zero way and then we go play orange county all ages clubs at a place called checks there's this little club but for some wacky reason we'd play there all the time and it was all younger people and we slowly built this little army of people. When we when we hit the strip, we had all the because it's all ages. So all these all ages people came year after year, and they just kind of grew up with us. So that was where the we one, the one thing. Out. The one thing I gotta say. The one thing I gotta say. When we were when we were struggling and trying to, and crossing over, we we met our manager Howie Hoverman, yeah. who, who owned everything. He owned, the guitar, he owned the guitar shop over there <laughs> on Sunset. It was called Guitars of Us. Okay, he actually gave me my, my trademark Burns bass there that I uh, let me see. Wow. Let, you know, yeah. 70s glam uh, what, Mark Bowen guitar. What happened Stop. was we went in there, we used to go in the store and everything, and he was managing Poison, okay, the same kind of you know, band that and was CC like was really just, there, you know, supportive on of the it. strip there. And, and, and he took us under his wing and basically put us in the forefront of a lot of places and, and did a lot of things for us that we couldn't actually yeah. get he to, had a he like, like he had a game plan like we didn't yeah. have a game plan we just went from gig to gig trying to do the best thing we could but he literally yeah. 
said, you guys have no game plan. And he goes, I'm going to, you know, he invested money for these big ads. All these cartoons were drawn by my high school uh, friend, Butch Lukic. He was our artist exclusively. And uh, he's gone on to be a famous uh, TV director. And he's won uh, Emmys and stuff. But he, uh, he did our cartoons, how he put them in magazines, how he put us in front of like crowds that were all ages. Our manager had so much to do with our, our uprising that it was like, good i didn't we should have brought him up at the beginning so, so basically basic, he, he was he was the today. brian Ep, he was the brian epstein of the of the sunset strip there you know he did help out a lot of bands he helped out he put us in, he, he got us outside uh, of the, the thing that we were trying to you know get across and 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 actually worked with us on that so it was a lot of fun uh you know and that was a lot of that was a good thing for us at that time yeah, I, I yep. can only imagine but that it helps have that guy. We, we, we did get a lot of lot of good guitars that we got to play and stuff like yeah. that. I, yeah. kept, I just kept that one. But, you know, the crazy thing is that how much love we had from just everybody in that Hollywood thing. Like, we would – they just – they loved us. They did, like, the Poodle well, Hair Metal Bands, the underground ones. They just – we played everywhere. And that's why, like, now as time's gone on, you can't really rewrite history. Like, if somebody comes up to me and says, oh – uh, you know, oh, you know, yeah, I saw this flyer where it was like the Starwood, you and a bunch of punk bands. I'm the first one to say, like, no, that's that's a different zeros. You know what I mean? I don't. Why, why, would, why would you say it's us anyway? <laughs> yeah, because it's not. But at the same time, I just think that's why I say we have a story to tell. And I think well, our story is just as important as any other. That's band. what we're going to name. We're going to name. We're going to name the documentary that I just I just I just figured out. We have a story to tell. Yes, <laughs> that's going to be the name of our documentary. Well, I'm that's... glad you're here getting the word out because on some yeah. days there'll be someone on here who's got a diamond award, and uh, and then other days we have people that didn't get. I never say underrated. We talk, we, we now say underexposed. Maybe some, although you guys are pretty exposed, but worldwide we need to get the word out. You guys have the four original members from that famous lineup. Uh, together you're alive and and somehow you're getting along sometimes when i talk to you guys right now i feel like one of those howard stern interviews where he has the ramones on <laughs> and yeah. they, you can see they, they still have a little a little tension over the way they remember things but you but got no the if this is important to say jason we are older and we have our own we do have like sammy himself like he's you know he's a songwriter and other things he's a busy guy even though you know I'm a busy guy. I have my own life, you know, and, and so do the other two guys, Joe Normal and Mr. Insane. That being said, not everybody can do everything. Like we could play a show six months from now and it might just be, you know, three of us. It might be like at this point, you have to accept the fact that people can do what they can do. And we were fortunate that everybody could do the whiskey. And this is a type of scenario going forward that everyone's invited if they can do it, then they'll be there. So, the so what player. you're saying, what you're saying, there, there is no more original lineup. I, I just want to hear. It. Who's the most difficult? No, I'm not saying I, I don't there's know no about. more original lineup. I'm just saying that people can do what they can do. It doesn't mean if if a guy's not there that, that we're not getting along or not. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, we're I mean, at a point where the zeros guys? isn't going to play every week. Like the zeros is not going to play every month. It's going to be a special thing when we play, and whoever can do it. We'll I'll, I'll be fun. out. I just want to clarify. I will be out playing. Okay. Whether it's with the, whether it's with, whether, hold on, let me talk. Whether it's with the zeros of the original lineup or with other guys, I will, I, I'm doing a solo thing and I'm also doing where um, I'm going to be. If I do, if I do go out and play, I will be playing zero songs. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, because I, know people, I know people who are going to want to hear them and stuff like that. So I, I will be out on tour. You know, it, whatever happens, I hope it's with the original lineup. Okay, I hope we could get everything settled that where everybody could do the same things. Because you got to remember, thirty years went by, so people people took different paths in their lives, and they got different things. Yeah, they got different things going on. Whether whether they're married, have jobs, whatever they do. I I've been doing music all my life, and and that's how I support myself. But the thing is, is that um, it's like I'm I'm going out to record a new album. I'm gonna be probably putting out a zeros record with, with songs that we recorded back, you know, when we were with the original lineup and stuff like that, hopefully, you know, we have, we have a deal with uh, Warner brothers where, you know, they want to put out an album uh, where they want to put out, uh, they want to make a vinyl record. They want to, they want us to go out 
stuff like that. You know, if that, doesn't happen, on record. if that doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen. There's nothing I could do about it. Would I love it to happen? Yes, I would. I would love it to happen. But the thing is, is that I can't dictate what, what goes on with people's lives, if they're busy, yeah. if they're doing yeah. other things and stuff like that. So it's like, you got to remember that. So that element. So if the fans, um, you know, if I do go out, I hope, you know, we gain the support and everything. They come out and see us and, and, and whoever's in doing playing or whatever we're doing, you know, they come out and see us and support us. But that's really what that's really what's going on. We're trying to get the original lineup to where it, it, it could function as a real band again. But, you know, obviously you did it, though. You played the whiskey 30th. I, I think that's a great start. I think that's a great start. And, uh, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for it, but you know, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. The people got people do things, and they, they, they got different things going on. So time will tell. We'll see what happens. All right, hold on. You know? Let me let me dig deeper into this. So now, in the years that uh, that uh, Danny and Joe were not playing in the uh, the, the zeros, you guys yeah. had a band called Cold Blue Rebels with Mickey Finn. Right. From you know, I know Sam point. probably doesn't want me to talk about Cold Blue Rebels, but well, the I don't, is, I, it, it's not that. It's a, go go talk about it all you want. The whole, whole thing is Cold Blue Rebels was a band that Danny went well, out I'll with. I'll talk about it because I'll go ahead. But uh, the reality is, Mickey Finn. For when I had the chance to start Cold Blue Rebels with Mickey Finn, I looked at him like I was a glam punk, and that's a whole separate thing. You know what I mean? I, and he was the glam punk meaning there was only one guy you know he looked like he was in hanoi rocks and discharge at the same time you know what i mean and i looked we played shows we played uh with jeff boy and i just loved that band and i just looked up to him a little bit and when i uh he was moved to la and he's all listen i'll start a band with you he was into rockabilly and psychobilly and so was i it's just that's how we kind of we were, we were talking about these bands he goes you know what i'm gonna i'll start a band with you if it's a if it's like rockabilly psychobilly and you go buy one of those big you know bases you know what i mean like i have right there you know see it and i go okay hey that took for like that was a hard leap but i just sold some gear i bought it and we started it for fun and we we started we wrote the first record and most of it most of it and then we got this guy from a band called the glamour punks to play drums and then we needed a guitar player and we we auditioned people and it just and then finally joe found out about it and he hit me up he goes ah, i want to do this i want to come down here and joe normal's an amazing guitar player and can play other types of music and it just happened but the reality was that kind of made sam mad at back in the day because uh, like, maybe what? what what are you doing this is the zeros with a different singer you know like he had a valid little like what are you doing you know what i mean and it was like it's well, not i like couldn't that. i couldn't no i couldn't understand why both of those guys would do that, but they wouldn't do this. That's really what it was. It had nothing really, to do with me being. I understand had nothing what to do with me being, hold, Let me finish. It had nothing to do with me being a singer or anything like that. But you know, it, it's just it was it was like one of those things. It was like I was sitting there going, "Why would you want to do that?" Which is fine, you could do that. But why wouldn't you want to do the zeros? You were fight. You were fighting the zeros. They were fighting the zeros well, about. Let's, let's 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 ask Danny. He's here. Why would yeah. I mean? I, I get yeah, why. You, why is that? Why is that, Danny? I get can you. I have, ask, you can I talk? I get, well, hold on. Let me let me just finish the question. You. I hope I can get, talk and get my answer out. We get that you wanted to play with Cold Blue, Cold Blue Rebels. That's fine. Uh, but why would you not want to do uh, uh, zero shows as well? Okay. A, I did. I did work two jobs. You know what I mean. So that's important. The truth, the truth, Danny. The truth. Let the me truth. answer my question. <laughs> and here, the reality was. That thing took off. Thanks to a guy named Wednesday 13, he hooked us up with the label, ran by a guy named John Nelson. He put out our record. And next thing you know, every single weekend, I'm driving somewhere playing. Next thing you know, I'm taking time off work to go across the country with Wednesday 13. But he took us across the country like three times. We did our own two week, countless weeks where we did it. And it was this crazy fun thing that was making money and paying for itself. So I just... I kept going, but in the at this time, I we played Webster Hall in New York City, and it was packed. Sam came down to see it, and I was really we were, me and Joe were really happy because it, it, this is crazy as this is. His opinion does mean a lot to me. The fact that he's there meant a lot to me, and uh, 
I have a chemistry with, if you've seen the zeros, I don't just play bass. I'm sitting there talking to Sam. We have like a Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis thing going on sometimes. And that's just the way it is. So it meant a lot to me that he was there, but it's just something I had to see through. And, uh, I'm literally Mickey Finn is one of my best friends today. So is Billy from Jeff Boy. Like, but really, like, I mean, a real friend. You know what I mean? And I'm just it was happy to get that chance to do that. And before this, there's a guy that um, actually you might know, J uh, Jason. He was a guy named Greg Verdusco. He played a. Yeah. He was he moved to Vegas, and he was literally my best friend. And I had a band with him before he moved there. And after I left the zeros, uh, or I got thrown out as whatever you, whatever you're going to say the first time I had years where I just worked a job. I was a parent to my son and I wasn't in a band, but I, I was mean, so really, now you're talking about a job. You've been working at the, uh, the comedy store, right? For I've had my day job and the comedy store, which I run the main room. I'm this head stage manager there. I've been there for 26 years. We have our 50th anniversary this week. Crazy. I've worked there. It's a big responsibility. I take it seriously. And, you know, that's why I'm saying, but uh, that's a pretty big thing to go. Okay, I'm, I'm in the background of it, but the comedy store is the biggest like comedy club on the West coast. It's the one of the, the, the legacy alone. It's, it's a very honor to, to do that, you know? Yeah. But, when you, and you see legendary people, but I want to, before we get too into that, I want to, so, so Sammy comes to see at Webster hall. What does he, he say? Does. Uh, I remember there was a joke we had because Mickey Finn was actually from New Jersey and mm -hmm. Joe's from New Jersey. And a lot of times we're sitting there in front of the people. I'm from Southern California. And uh, they were like, oh, you know, uh, they're in the city. But they're like, you know, we, we were East Coasters too, you know, kind of bonding with the crowd. Like, oh, oh, we're from Jersey. And Sam, like, is proud from being from Jersey. He never tried to say, like, I'm from the city. I'm from New York. Like, he's always been proud to be from New Jersey. And so is Joe. But they're like, oh, you know, we're from Jersey, Jersey. And then I'm like. I got up on the mic just being a smart ass. And was like, oh, well, why did you, if you're so proud of being from Jersey? Why didn't you move to Southern California? You know, the land of sun, palm trees, fake titties, things like that. You know why? Because it's better. It, it was like people threw some shit at me just for fun. You know what I mean? That was joking. Actually, actually the weather's warmer. That's what it is. He came up to me <laughs> and he goes, hey, that was a good, that was a good joke. You know, I would have, it would have been funnier with me and you, but it was a good joke. And uh, yeah, so that's it. And so what was the problem? Why didn't you well, – I know you were busy with both the things, but did you turn down um, Zero's gigs? At that point in time, Sammy had like a revolving door of Zero people, like through the years. The Zeros, he had a solo records. He had a band called Psyche Suicide. And he Seri had – Serious Suicide. Serious Suicide, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, you know, all credible stuff. And I, you know, was, I raised my kid on my own. I, I worked at comedy store. I had my little band with Greg Verdusco, the guy that moved to Vegas that hung around you and Todd and everyone in the city centers just for fun. And, they, and he was a great writer, great friend. And I was just happy in my little world. So when that thing took off, we started fighting over certain things and uh, we started arguing over certain things. And what thing took off? What thing took off? Kobe Rebels. And we started oh, touring oh. and doing stuff. He, he, oh. he, right. You know, Sam was like, how could you do this when, you know, like. Well, I couldn't understand know, why, why. I they understand would go what he said. But then it want, came oh, to a point right, we'll where finish, it, got, go ahead. it got really dirty. It got to the point where it's like, hey, you know, you shouldn't be using this name, Danny Dangerous or Joe Normal in, in this band, you know, and then it got bad. And then the worst, we were fighting about this stuff. The last thing I'm going to do is jump on stage and play a thing because I'm going, well, wait a second. This is my end. You know, there's two stories. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying Sam's wrong. I'm not saying Sam's right or wrong either. But my point was, if you're going to be Sammy Serious and Psyche or Serious Suicide, if you're going to be Sammy Serious in your solo albums, well, I thought of my own name, Danny Dangerous. I should be able to use just continue on with life in this band. I'm doing a credit to the zero, or Zeros because people who like that band, they're going to go see the Zeros. He felt a different way. And Sammy, well, I got to say, hold yeah. on one second, Danny. Sammy, I got to say, I, I understand where you come from. You know, I put a lot of work into this band and these guys, and I, you know, we should be out doing it. I, I do get that. But I think as a, you know, as a fan of music myself, I think having those guys playing was good for the Zeros. I really do. I think that the Danny Dangerous and Joe Normal Names some people who didn't know the zeros might have went, 
oh, these guys, let me look into them, and then maybe they can come yeah. to the show well, and we get their, their Zeros record signed. I understand that you would rather it be happening as the Zeros, and fortunately, right now, that is happening. Well, the Zeros was is. incorporated. The problem was, let me, let me speak for a minute. The Zeros was incorporated with those names, okay? So there were songs with those names, okay? There was It was built around these names. It was serious, normal, dangerous, insane. And that was that was the thing, like, you know, uh, Mo, Larry, and Curly, same kind of thing. You know what I mean? It was, it was like, you know, the same kind of thing. We had our names. They all represented something. And what happened was that it started taking the, the, the element of the name started leaving the band. And started leaving the image of the band and started started actually destroying it. And I wasn't into the name being destroyed. I wasn't into the names being destroyed like that. So the whole thing was that uh, uh, Danny That's how um, it feels like we, we have two different. No, it's, not, it's not. It's not that. It, what it is it is, is, that. is basically they they hey, took. Dude, maybe they, you're gonna get a fight right name. here on the show. <laughs> that's your problem. That's not my problem. It, it's like and I'm just telling the truth. I, I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. I know you so are. The thing is, is that. Uh, let me just finish, and then you can say what you want. The whole thing is the names were incorporated. They were under. They fell under the trademark of the zeros. Okay, he and said they, that. I don't say well, that. I've traded well, my own name. I well, own you got to stop. Cut, you got to stop cutting me off because then I can say what I want. The thing was they trademarked the names Danny and Joe. Okay, if you want to get into the dirt of it. Okay, they yeah, trademarked the name. We well, they, they, took the, they took the names from the band. They took the names from the band and trademarked them. Okay. And made them their own band, made them their own name, which isn't their name. It's the name of a band when you trademark it. So when you trademark a name, you're trademarking a name for the name of the band, not the name of the person. Okay, so so basically I got very aggravated at that because it was actually stolen from the band. Okay, and if they didn't want to play in the band as those names, why would they take the name out to start another band? Okay. Or to do other things, it was just a slap in the face. It's a tricky and, uh, argument, though, Sammy. Because, and I understand you're passionate about it, but you know, Didi Ramon leaves the Ramones. He's yeah. still, Didi, he's still yeah, but they, they didn't. They didn't, they didn't focus. Let me let me say what I got to say. Hey, you they say didn't focus. Part, right they back. didn't focus the names around the band. They they it was Joey, Didi, whatever. But the thing is, you you'll never hear a song that says, "Hello, I'm Joey Ramone. This is Didi on guitar, whatever." This and that. This was incorporated in the band and the names. Now, do I have a problem with them using the name? Yeah. Okay, if it's not in the zeros. But the thing is, is that, uh, you know, it, it was just not a good thing in my eyes, okay? Because if, if why wouldn't you do the band? Right. Why wouldn't you right. do the zeros if, if you're with the name and you're going to take the name out of the band and do something else? You well, know, people I want. You to be felt, I think you probably felt a little left out that these guys go do something, and you know, the zeros well, would it, be doing that. It, it it wasn't really left out. It was just it was just it was just gall. It was just like why? You know, you know, what are you doing? It's like you know, you had this name in this band. We 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 incorporated the names in the band, and and the thing was that that was your name in the band. It wasn't your name outside of the band because when they left the band, okay, when Joe left the band. He wasn't in. He wasn't Joe Normal. He was. He was the Hutchinsons. This happened. The, he was Joe Hutchinson. Okay. It wasn't like they took the name out of the band. They took the name after the fact that the other bands that they were doing didn't work. Oh, it okay? was like, then. Now then they wanted. Then, then they wanted to have the name. Okay. So, so, so look, I'm not. It's I'm not out to argue well. about the names I or anything my, like my that. My point as well. Hold I on. My, you need to let me talk too. Like it can't just be you, bro. Go ahead, Dan. Well, you, you are talking. So, my point is. At the end of the day, we worked out our problems. We came back to we 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 play with the zeros now. You know what I mean? Joe Normal has his own his own independent career. He's still back playing with us. You should you at should the, manage at them. the end of the day. <laughs> we're playing together, and that's yeah. what means something. We had to cut things loose, Jason. Like we have hardcore dis, dis, like arguments on how we show. Like to me, like Sammy owns the trademark of the zeros, and I respect him as an artist not wanting to stream his music, but when you don't, there's this thing like if you don't stream your music, you're almost erased from the internet. That left Wait an a open second. door. Sammy, we don't stream music? Now he's starting I, I, to do a I, couple I, songs. Okay. I respect that, by the way. But listen, that left this open. Streaming, now listen I to me. The listen, listen to me, okay? The streaming thing, okay, is a money thing. Okay, it's 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 not I a good thing. You. I respect what okay, you say. Okay, when you 
You can you can write your music and stream it. I'm not I'm not doing no, it. No, the no, no. I'm saying, the reason I'm why I'm not what you're doing. The reason why uh, you got to let me talk, Danny. The, the reason why I'm not streaming my music is because I don't feel that people should be able to be able to. They should be able to. Oh, it's one thing getting music for free, okay? But it's one thing an artist taking writing music and doing his music and making music and and putting money into his music and and people putting money into the music and um people not yeah. being able to buy it you know people it. listening to it the downloading it uh, doing whatever they want so am i am i a fan of spotify no no i mean no. i'm not a fan not. of spotify i'm not into letting my songs get heard a million times on spotify and and getting uh, when they're when they're paid played a million times, you get like something like thirty seven dollars. You can't even buy a couple of gallons of gas for thirty seven dollars these days. So it's Devil's like advocate. Where, Devil's let advocate. Talk to you. you get your music. No. You, you, get your music you, Sam. you get your music into the hands of a lot of kids who don't have a lot of money, and maybe they'll come see a zero show or they'll go buy a piece of vinyl. Most people who stream, and I'm not arguing. You're certainly entitled to the way you want to handle your yeah. music. But I think a lot of kids get those records and they buy a, a vinyl album. They love uh, vinyl now. And so yeah. I think that, and I get what you're saying. I think they screwed over so many artists with this. Ed. Well, why should, why should someone pay Spotify 10, what is it, 30 bucks a month or something? I don't even know what it is I because I, I think it's 10 bucks. It's 10 it bucks a month. Okay. It's they, nice they, to tell pay. people you can go listen to that record right now. Now, I know you're thinking I should get paid for it, but there's only so much money. If they hear that record and they like it, we've well, made it isn't, zero let, Let's look at it like this. Let's look at it like this. Let's say somebody gives me money that I have to pay back, okay, to make this record, okay? So this is more of the problem. I have to pay them back to make this record, okay? So the, the problem is if I let everybody have it for free, I can't pay them back. And then the next record is not going to come out. Why is the next record not going to come out? Because the guys don't want to give any more money because they're not going to make any money. This isn't about me stopping it. It's just so that's about you got to get an advance, and then you have a label give you a little well, bit of money is, to get paid, and then you can Yeah, it. but those days, those days are over, just as well as you know, Jason. They're they're not like that anymore. Not so like they're before, not completely over. I mean, I have a sponsor, Golden Robot Records. They have a lot of good stuff. You know, so it's, it's eventually coming back. I, I got a sponsor. I, I got a sponsor too. That's how I make my albums. I mean, they pay for it. They they want me to make an album. They love my art. They love what I do. And the thing is, they they sit there and go. Hey, you know, we want to make some money, you know, get our money back on this because we're, you know, still it costs money to go in a studio. It costs money to get guitars. It costs money to do things and stuff like that. So right. so what I'm trying to say is that there is a problem here of, of making money against people having music for, uh, for free. Do I do I do I like people getting music for free? Yeah, I do. I, I, I even put songs on Spotify one song for each album so people could get a taste of what's going on okay so it's not like i'm i'm a total you know uh miser about it it's it's just that you know they they can they can do that they can hear the zeros right. but you know they got to buy the album okay so All that's right. just what it is okay. so now, fair now, enough. Well, hold on Danny, now, here's I'm gonna get one other one. thing Danny, I'm, gonna, hold on. I'm handing you the golden ticket jason because Wait, Danny, you, give me one what? second don't say anything yet because i want to ask the question is where can they buy Zero's music then? You know what? On this reunion, I had to relearn some songs. I'll be honest. I haven't played them in a long time. I couldn't find it. So I literally found it on Amazon. Amazon. and On Amazon, I typed in 4321. For anybody listening someone, to this, you can get all the records. Hold on. Hold on. At SammySerious.com or 4321thezeros.com. Or you could get it on Amazon. You can you're, you can get it on iTunes. You get the four three two one on iTunes. It's on Warner Brothers. They distribute okay. it out there. You can buy it. Okay, it's not like you can't get it. Okay, and there is a song. If you want to look it up on Spotify, there is songs on the zeros. We are on there. It's just not the whole album, man. So people yeah. could sit there and take the whole album and just right. listen to it as, as much as they want. Whatever they have to buy it, so we can make so I can make or we can make new albums for people. You now right, fans Daniel, want new stuff too. Okay. Now that being said, I fully uh, respect his his journey for that. I, well, I do. also I don't Metallica do. and and everybody yeah, else. I know. Do. I don't disagree <laughs> with him. I don't. I don't. It's just I'm. All I was saying was it op it closed us off from the internet. Where other, you know, there's two other zero bands in history. There's an English band from '77. I think it was the first one. And then there's one from San Diego from '77, and that opened up the door. 
the San Diego one came in, kind of just took over the internet, which is okay. You know what I mean? Because we didn't, but at the well, same I'm time, I'm not angry. I'm we, not angry. We need to, like now, we're kind of. I'm I'm here today to kind of join in with Sammy, help build the legacy of, of our story. You know what I mean? And I just, you know, like. When you guys I, I come back, can you guys come back once a week, kind of like a therapy thing. We'll get it. Advice. Well, okay, I'll give you one more argument. This is going to go. This one's going to go off again. I'm going to give you this. Sam's going to blow up on it. Uh, how much time you got, but Jason? One thing this that is, I this didn't is about, come back to this is about blowing. Oh, this is about blowing up Sam here. Yeah. Danny no, no, wants no, to, no, no, Danny right, wants to see you right. blow up. It, we we on, just I can't have a decent interview. I want to point. Go ahead, go ahead, Danny. I want to hear it. Hold on, let's hear it. Because we're working it out. But I love the fact that. Hey, hold on, I love Sam, do. but it's nothing hey, I don't. But Danny, hold one on thing. one second. Danny, hold on. Everybody, hold on. Stevie Rochelle from the band Tough and Metal Sludge, he said, you got to have Danny on. He would be a great guest, okay? I said, that would be great. I want to talk about the reunion. Now, I want to make the point that Danny said, I want to have Sammy. Uh, you know, I on, have to. I could. Me. I wouldn't do this without Sam. So I... It, so I think that you're not as far apart as you think. We're bringing up some old wounds, but you guys did. But I'm tell telling you why I didn't do the zeros. I'm telling you the reason. Let's and hear this it. Is why. So another reason that made me completely mad is I would never. You've never seen me in a band with purple hair other than the zeros. I take the the legacy strong. But I, you I've see his name in other bands. But I never <laughs> talked like you see his I name in other went, bands. I never right went there. on the I never went on the internet and talked shit about Sam. I never yeah. went on the internet and said anything bad about the zeros. I never did anything like that because I hold well, it. Let me, let, let me clarify. Let me clarify. I, I, did, I, did, I did I did do that. I did do that. I did do that. I did talk bad about members of the band I on the internet. Did anything. Because 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 the reason why the reason why is because I was pissed off. That's really why. It had nothing to do with it. I was but mad. One so there's not, there was no bad. You, could, you couldn't. I Believe me, I tried getting through. I'm going to say it. Play I'm going to get it out. Danny, tell us what he did. I'm going to get it out. Go ahead. Okay. He's listening. I'm Go ahead. Waiting. So then the guy, Sammy, my blood brother, goes yeah. and finds three guys. Yeah. He gets a guy who I thought of my own image. Nobody told me how to do it. It was all me. And then he dresses up a guy. Like me making dopey faces, like, you know, like I make, like just being fun with him on stage. And I looked at that is so disrespectful to me because I would never do that to him. And that well, means he's let me, so let me, mad. In my defense, in my defense, I, never, I, I said, I'm not playing in the zeros anymore. Okay. But let me, let me say this in my defense. Okay. The thing was that guy who wanted, he liked Danny so much. Okay. That he, he wanted does. to, let me say what I got to say. The reason why that guy actually copied a little bit about Danny with the bow Not tie a bit. and, and Not the a jacket. Bit. No, it was a little bit. It was a little bit. It wasn't that much. So anyway, so like I I said, why are you doing that? And he goes, I like Danny so much, man. I just think that it's great that I could be like Danny. I go I go, well, I'm not going to say, say you can't do it. What do you want me to say? You know, Danny Dangerous, that's in the song and this and that. And that's what it was. But the thing was, it's not really, it wasn't a slap to Danny at all from me. It, it was basically the guy just admired him so much, he wanted to be like him. So that's really Sam what it knew was. I wouldn't like that. Sam could have stopped it and he didn't. But once again, Jason, we worked through it. We, I don't know, you know if I like, can stop. we can argue today, but these are things that wounds that we decided to move past. I'm giving you this because I want people to see like, Okay, there is troubled waters sometimes. But the end of the day is we put it aside. I look at my brother, Sammy. He can write songs I can't. And I literally am standing with him today. I stood with him at the whiskey stage. We've decided to move past it. I've made him. I'm not a saint. I've done stuff to him. He's done a yeah, lot Jason, to me. So why are you bringing this shit up, huh? <laughs> because this is the kind no of idea. stuff that's honest. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff that, but people, his audience will watch this. Part I say, of the I say, we just turn go, wow, on Jason is, right now. Refreshing. <laughs> we're not <laughs> sitting here candy coating it. We're just, yeah. we're throwing it out. Like it's a look, real. Like I said, look, thing. look, bands, look, look, bands are dysfunctional families. That's really the bottom line. Okay, they're, but we're they're, not the worst, like Stephen Pierce says. We're not let, the worst, yeah, right? Let, let me just say, let me say this. Let me say, let me say this. Everybody, 
I just listen. Look at Danny him, loves look talking over me. You should see Danny on the phone with me. He just keeps talking over me. I just can't get okay, a word. I'll, it, okay? I'll shut up. I'll so, shut up. So, okay, good. Okay, bands are dysfunctional families. Okay, they're, 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 it's a marriage. It's a marriage in itself. Okay, there, there's there's problems. There's good times. There's bad times. There's all kinds of crap. Okay. So the thing is, is that for that one forty-five minute show that you're going up, the the, the problems that arise between the show, the, the like this show that we did at the whiskey was six months, okay, before we hit that stage, okay. And believe me, there was a lot of problems, okay. There was a lot of problems. Now, now Jason, is that you it, wouldn't, you wouldn't even know, like you wouldn't even know. The thing, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> now you would. The thing is, so so the thing is, there's a lot of problems. So so bands are dysfunctional families. And that's just the way it goes, man. There ain't no way out of that. And, and, and I, you know, that's just it. So everybody got their own little voice. Everybody got their own opinion. Everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants to do their thing. And everybody got their ego, okay? So, so basically, we, we tried to work around that, and we succeeded, okay? So can, can we keep doing it? Possibly. I'm up for it, you know? Can we not keep doing it? I don't know. So, so the whole thing is that when we say that, you know, people got their own lives, you got to remember, it's like 30 years that went by before we played together again. So that's a if long time. Come to your town. I suggest you see this. These guys are unstable. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll keep it together. Well, everybody, everybody, everybody loves a train wreck, right? So, so you know what the crazy thing is, Jason? Though, even though we're sitting there, I've given you some honesty to argue a little with Sam. I talk to Sam almost like every other day, mm -hmm. and I talk to him about normal stuff. It's not about the zeros. He is one of my best friends. Like he's come to me with certain stuff that he's done. Like overall, I look at him as an older brother type of figure, and. We were a band that never did drugs. We, we, we mowed through, like, really hardworking. You know what I mean? And, you know, we accomplished a lot of stuff as a band together. So even though you're seeing a squabble, like you've seen the Ramones squabble, you've seen other bands squabble, at the end of the day, we're not really a train wreck. Like, you know, you said to be here at 4 o'clock. We're both here at 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. You know, we show over the, you know, that, you know what I'm saying? There's like way worse scenarios of people. Listen, I think yeah, you yeah. guys were much more interesting than I expected. I thought we were just going to ask a few questions. I wanted to talk about the tape head soundtrack. You I should. To talk Skip about I, I will. I'll Skip tell you all about it. that right now. This is <laughs> we played the for tape heads. Watching, you guys have a song. It's produced by Nigel Harrison, who's the original bass player for Blondie. And then Steve Bader singing on it. This is amazing to me. So you, go ahead, tell me about it. Okay. Well, we were we were playing the lingerie. Okay. Nigel Harrison was in Blondie, and I used to see Nigel Harrison down with Blondie when when uh, you know, he was from England. But the thing was is that he came and saw, and he loved this song that we did. He loved this song. I wrote this song, Mister MX Seven. It's called. Okay. And um, it's about what a missile would say if it went up during a nu nuclear war. That was that was the theme of the song. OK, so so the thing was, he hears this song, he loves this song and he's doing the movie. He's the musical director for tape heads. OK, so he he, he approaches me and he goes, hey, you know, I want to really use this song in a movie. And, uh, you know, we want to get going on this and stuff like that. So uh, we did the deal uh, with the song and um, we uh, took he he brings it in the studio there and Stib Bader's from the Dead Boys. OK, because I was a, I was a fan of the Dead Boys. Lord's in the church as well. He was also in Lord, Lords of the New Church back in the 80s. And uh, Stiv, Stiv was a very nice guy. And, um, you know, we go into the studio. It was a music grinder over at Melrose. And, and uh, I'm showing, I'm showing the, the, I guess, Lords of the New Church, the song, you know, and, and everything. And they're, they're going through it. And we're going through it. And, and I remember, I remember Stiv, he was very, Stiv, Stiv and me got along very well. And, and, and he goes, he goes, Sam, you got to change this word. I go, I go, dude, you're Stiv Baders, man. You can do anything you want to the fucking song. I don't care, you know. So, so you know, we had a we had a good time. The 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 uh, the, the uh, movie came out. We went to the premiere and everything. Stiv was great. The Lords of New Church were great in the song. You could see the video on YouTube. It's on YouTube, I think. Them singing it, and uh, it's actually the video. zeros backing up Stiv though on the recording, like the yeah, uh, the, the, part, the drummer, Mister Insane, and uh, Joe Normal did play on it. Right, so, they so did. I don't know. No, 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 no. It was it was Lords of New Church that oh, played okay. on the and, and uh, see, on they, it says that it was everybody, but they put Steve over your voice. So yeah, I, I thought uh, it I'm not. Where does it say that? No, no. I'll, I'll clear that air right now. It, it was Lords of New Church that cut the cut the record in the uh, music grinder. 
I was there as a sort of like a executive guy, like overseeing what was going on with the tune. And, um, you know, Stiff sang it and uh, Lords of New Church cut it. So there wasn't wasn't any zeros cutting it. We I we did the record when we were in England. We did a record called Cut Rate Metal. And um, the song is placed on that album. OK, it was on that album, too. So it, it was like that's our version of it. And on YouTube, you could see our version. You could see their version and uh, put the two together. You know, people, uh, get mad. people get mad when I cite Wikipedia. And, and, and well, that's there's a reason, because obviously, you know, you were there. It says the Zeros recorded the song Mr. MX7 with producer. But we did. We, yeah, we did. We did record the song, but not for the movie. OK, well, that was well, that was Lords of New Church that recorded the song for the movie. OK, we recorded the song on our own record, but it wasn't, it wasn't that. So that that's a, that's a typo. I'll clear that right right up right now. Yeah, well, and, and, and it's, it's interesting to know, but yeah, so there is, you can get a Zero's version of it as well, is what you're saying. There, there is, we, we, we cut the song before wanted? before they cut, we cut the song before they uh, did the uh, did the uh, movie. We cut the song on a record before they did the movie. That's how Nigel heard the song after he heard us play it. I gave him the record with the song on it, and he heard it then, too. That's Sammy, why were, you, it. were you, like, kind of writing, like, jingle type things? Because like, I know you were trying to get placed a lot. Was that well, a thing for you? What I'm trying to get he what just, he just naturally did that. He wasn't trying to get like jingles on TV or nothing. He just he wrote like it would go that way. Like Ricky Rockman, the the guy had a radio show in uh, Los Angeles, and yeah, we wrote the song for Ricky. We Rackman, decided yeah. to write a song with for him, and Sam just instantly like you know we just put it together. But it's like that that's just who he is. Like he likes to write. Fun I I I, I did a theme. I did a theme song for Love Line. I did a song for Imus in the morning. Okay, along with Howard Stern, it was. I miss in the morning. Uh, like we had, a, we had a theme song for him that he played <laughs> as well. Uh, he it counteracted with Howard. Okay, but but the thing was that uh, Howard played his song. I miss had his song. I miss played it all the time too. So so no one really I knows that. I should put I should put that on the uh, I should put that on YouTube. The I miss song because yeah, that's well, a great song. But you're an it's opportunist. A great song. You, what? You, you're an opportunist. You you've written like, some nothing wrong with that. No, yeah, not well, at I'm, all. Imus was a great had a great show on NBC too, as long with Howard. You know what I mean? He was on in the morning. You know, you had Imus Fantastic. But the but the song itself, the Imus song itself, he loved the song. He played it just as much. And it was a great song too. So so it was a totally different than Howard's song. But uh it's not it didn't get as famous as Howard's song. Right. You know? Other things like our manager Howie Huberman got us in a movie with Eric Estrada once. So if yep. you're ever gonna find, yeah, they, 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 they used they used they used two of the songs. They used two of the songs for that movie, which was titled they Cage Fury. Yeah, Cage Fury. Cage, Cage, Cage Fury. Cage Fury. Cage Fury. That's a classic. Yeah, yeah it was there. great because uh, you know I would tune I would tune into Cinemax at night. It was always on. It was, it was always. a great movie. Yeah, always on. So it was like you, you know you could probably probably still see it. So now it's now it's like. It's still played what overseas. What called the uh, the Lonnie Anderson show? You could see. Yeah, us we on did the Lonnie. Is that, did, the, is that Easy Street? Yeah, Easy Street. We were on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that was that was before Danny. That was before yeah, that Danny. Was before okay, Danny. Peter Easy. Noon it, it appears with you guys. Is that how it works? It's on there. It's on YouTube. Yeah, Peter Peter Noon uh, was on with us, and uh, he he had a band, and he moved in next door to Lonnie Anderson, and we were the band, and I actually got my SAG card for that. Wow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was actually pretty good. But uh Peter you know, Noon was, Hermits, Her Herman's Hermits, if people don't know. Yeah, yeah, Herman's Hermits. I was I was a big fan of Herman's Hermits. I love Me those. too. Oh. Herman's Hermits was yeah. a kind of punk yeah. before punk. Henry the Eighth. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, Henry the Eighth. Yeah, second verse, yeah. same as the first. Ramones would do that yeah. much later, you know. So yeah. hey, you know what? Jason, on a whole separate thing, I was watching this interview you did with um the other day with uh it was the drummer from um, Wasp that was in in L.A. Guns. Steve Rodgers. And um, you brought up, I, you're the only guy other than me and this guy I grew up with named Dave that know of this band called The Bees. Mm -hmm. And that album came out, and I bought it with my buddy Dave Purdy from Escondido. And we were like, oh, we thought this was the greatest band. And I don't know, I just loved it. So we play with L.A. Guns, and he joins the band. And I, you know, me and Sam would really hang out with Nico, especially Sam, really like Nikki B from, you know, the weirdos. And uh, he got along with him. So as you know, new people are coming in. I go up, I remember I went up to Stephen Riley that we played the 
the country club with them or the palace. One of the one of those two gigs I actually got a chance to go to when I'm like, oh man. Yeah, I loved that band that you were in called the Bees. And dude, it was like he was so excited when you asked him about it. But dude, when it, back in the 80s at the palace, wasn't excited about it. <laughs> that just fully yeah. blew me off. They were oh, on bandstand uh, at one point, but they, the band has the worst spelling. It's like B Z Z S or something. No one would ever know what the hell to call that band. But it was like this power pop hard rock. I love little gems like that, you know. It's it's funny the L.A. Guns drama. I could do shows on them every day. Dude, Paul Mars Black was here last, and you, you guys they got drama too. <laughs> you guys talked a little bit about that because you were talking about playing with Robert Stoddard. When Tracy was gone, let, let me let me say something about let me say something about Tracy Guns. Sam did. I I would see. Let me say something. Let me say something about Tracy Guns. Tracy Guns was the first guy to recognize the zeros as something very special. Yes. Okay, I'll and he put, us, Tracy, he, he, he put us in. He put, when he was playing, he he demanded that we be on the same bill yeah, with them. He did. And he really helped us out. Tracy Guns really helped us out. He was he was Even a very like, good friend. Even me, it's like when I joined the Zeros and it was like I was a new person and I gave it my all because I love Tracy. I love like what CC DeVille. I kind of looked at those dudes in your face. And, uh, you're talking about Sunset Strip guys. And uh, he really gave me encouragement. Like he would be like, he knew the bass player that was there before. And he's like, oh, I love this guy's energy. He's got to go, go, go. You know, he even stood in front of me in a whole gig once. Like, yeah, you know, like egging me on. And he really kind of, you know, and was so it was supported not just of our band but just like individually he was just like so i i just heard that interview and there you there was a little slag going on you know what i mean but it wasn't let's my also slag, talk it about was yeah. i know but let's also talk about the good part of tracy because to me there's the good like there's only good for us you see you see this sammy he He's yeah. gonna he'll tell you how great Tracy Guns is, but he'll give you hell. <laughs> I I told Tracy you Guns? Sam was great. I love Sam, you know. <laughs> yeah. What what's up with Tracy Guns? He, he's a nice you guy. guys. You guys but weren't Paul in a band with Tracy like Guns. I can't. You're both you talking guys, at the same time. What happened? You guys weren't in a band with Tracy Guns, so you have a, probably a better experience. I don't know the 300 people who were in LA Guns. They all have different stories, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I met Tracy. I met Tracy Guns. I met Tracy at White. Go uh, ahead, Danny. Are you done? I think every version of his like thing. I mean, I just, I always, you know, I, I've seen when he had the girls sing. I saw when he had the Atomic Punks guys sing. I saw when Paul Mars came back. I, I saw, thought that those versions were rougher than Sammy with the scab zeros. You know. Yeah. <laughs> like, he, like, doesn't like, when he doesn't like. I make fun of those bands and he gets mad at me, but I, I have the right to, you know what I mean? And, well, uh, you know, he had a guy yeah. that had a dog, a dog chain with a big lock on it and a top hat. And I'm all, you're making fun of me for my hat. Like what? <laughs> just like, Danny, I think Danny's taking things too personal. I'm just joking. Well, I think just joking. You guys both take things a little personal. You got yeah. that band was a passion to you. And I think there's a little anger towards it should have been bigger than it was. I'm, I'm very well that, that that's where that's 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 why that's where the talent lies in the anger okay if you don't have anger you don't have talent okay <laughs> that's really what it is so so i mean like uh you know that that's where it comes from and, and you know everybody got their problems you know and everybody's angry at something you know but i'm the first one to, off, assist, to admit it i'm the first I'm one to admit it am i an angry guy yeah all right i'm an angry guy but i'm also a nice guy so it, it, how it about the whiskey again? I bet you the whiskey wants you back. Oh yeah. We're yeah. totally loyal to the whiskey. If we, if uh, they'll, they'll decide when we should come back and, and we'll, uh, we'll honor that in some way, shape or form. Um, it, I'm like, going to I'm gonna have Jake on the show. And we're going to talk about it. It's coming up, but uh, Jake, is you it know, it's crazy. I knew Jake when he first moved here, he used to work uh, at the comedy store. He started as a uh, Polly Shore's assistant. And uh, I knew him from day one. I still know him. It's like, you know, and yeah, he, he still looks young. Like, he knew me when I had hair. Is it true that the Zero's logo is still painted on the whiskey underneath yeah. the sign? Yeah. You know how I knew that? I was working my job, my day job, and I was going down the thing, and they were changing the wood around the, th you know, the, the new, you know, where they put the advertisements on. Mm -hmm. And they had half of the wood off, and I saw the Z and the E. I went, oh, my gosh, it's still there. 
part of history. Yeah, definitely part of history. I want to make sure that people know we had a good time. People sometimes, they don't get to see this side of bands. But believe me, as they said, every band has this. It's great that you guys are back. I'm going to put a link in the description so you can find music. You can go watch their videos and you can get familiar with this band. And, put put uh, 4321, 4321thezeros.com. They could get they could get the records there and, and get everything there. Yeah, you know, and, and they could also go to iTunes. Yeah, you know, support, stuff support. like that. Sam's going to be in, in Vegas. He should go have a slice of pizza with him. Yeah, I, I will. Jason, I'm going to be in Vegas tomorrow, actually. So. All right, well, you, I'm going to uh, I'm, I'm actually gonna, going, I'm actually going to be recording a hit track again. The, the, probably this week. I don't know. I'm going to go up there this week, but I'll probably make the dates uh, to record the album in two two weeks or something like well, that. Well, let's get together. I'm in L.A. on yeah. Tuesday, Danny. I can come see you, and and I'll see you here. Oh, you want to come to the comedy? Are you here on the weekend? No, it's like a, a Tuesday, uh, Wednesday thing. Well, I'll, I'll be at the comedy store on the weekend, but if you ever come here, you know, just hit me up, and I'll get you in there, and you can I'll visit. You, I'll tell you a quick comedy store story. I saw Richard Pryor. Uh, he was doing stand up at the end of his life, and he was he was sitting down. And he I was, was there. Yeah, I'm I sure was there. Were. So, I, I it was you know I get a call from Ron Jeremy, you know the late porn star, <laughs> and uh, he tells me you want to go see Richard Pryor. I thought, what? Like Richard Pryor live on the Sunset Strip? I I got to see it. And we went, and it was and it was uh, legendary, but a little bit depressing, as you know. He's talking about. You know, his, his, his life and the end of the night he looked at Ron and he said uh, you still got that big dick you know uh, and uh, <laughs> probably yeah, the funniest the, line yeah. the comedy store has been a big thing for us like when we were really uh, kind of in the early part of our club thing working our way up Sam loved going to the comedy store and he is the one that took me there and he loved uh, Sam Kennison and now Sam Kennison's album hadn't been out yet you just kind of knew him our manager, I think, knew him, but uh, Sam would take me there to see him, and uh, and I eventually, me and like, I ended up having to work like a messenger job between like tours that we were doing, mm-hmm. and uh, I had it for a long time, and then I eventually would take, uh, I'd go to his accountant firm on Ventura Boulevard. It was like probably short the same one, and. Uh, I would get money, and then on Friday, like wherever he was in Los Angeles, I'd have to go find him and give him his weekend money. And I thought that was kind of cool. You know what I mean? He was like yeah. a good guy. But Sam was a big comedy store. Like I would. Now it's funny that I ended up working there all these years because you know <laughs> he's the one that turned me on. To I, 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 what's the best show you saw? Store. What's that? What, I'm asking you, Sammy. What's the best show that you saw there? The, the, Oh uh, well, else. Sam Kennedy used to come. We used to go in there on Monday night, okay? And every all the rockers would go down there, uh, like you know, everybody was on the strip used to go down there to see the comedy because it was, I think, it was free or it was something like it's um, like a dollar. It was like a dollar to get in or something like that. So everybody would come, in, you know. Sam Kennedy would come in late at night. You now we used to wait for him because, yeah, you know, he was great. It was like the best comic ever, you know, to see, and uh, he'd try out all his new material there. And like that is the only guy I really like stood in line and paid to see. Okay, like full price, full blown, you know. Uh, like, and there was a lot of comics that, during back that day, and a lot of rock and roll people. So it, the the rock and roll, you know, community mixed with the comedians, mixed with the comedy community. You know what I mean? So it was like one thing at that time in the eighties. You know, mm-hmm. so it was very it was very good back then doing that. But they're strong know? now. It's like. It's over the course of me working there. So many, uh, you see a generation, a generation of new comics come in. And there's like today, there's a really strong lineup as well. Yeah. You've seen a lot of talent. Everybody, like everybody, like and some of these guys are mind blowing, like that aren't with us today. Like George Carlin, for instance, I worked a lot of shows with him and he was the nicest guy, smart guy. I really felt like kind of honored to work uh, Louis Anderson, who just passed away recently, was the, just a great guy, a nice guy, funny, smart, and um, who else? Like uh, would be like Paul Mooney, uh, 
Uh, you, must see these, you must see these big guys come in and try out. Well, you just saw, you, he just saw yeah. Chris Rock. Chris yeah, Rock literally, was there playing, right? This Chris Rock thing, uh, he was at the comedy store the week before going in each, you know, the other, both our rooms and, and you know, getting, you know, his, you know, they come in and they practice, you know what I mean, for stuff. And uh, I, I saw him, you know, working really hard for that thing. So I. He I didn't comment so on, your, on your baldness or anything though, right? <laughs> no, no. He, he, I just would ask him if he'd want to go on stage, but he was, you know. I just saw Hardy work. So Take, you know, so. Take the hat off. Take the hat off. Take the hat off. Take you want the, there. Yeah, there yeah, you go. You want to see here? Here, I'll do something funny for you. I, I told, I told Danny he needs to put a purple spot on his head. Sammy, was That's his like, purple mohawk real back in the day? It yeah. was, yeah, yeah. It was real. It was real on stage too. Nice. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> he, he loves yeah, it. The zeros, the zeros here, yeah. It yeah, was real, bro. What, which you can get at four three one to zeros dot com. There was no <laughs> purple head. There was no purple like weird goth stores and malls at the time. I mean, there were times. I remember once we couldn't find any purple hair, and I think like I got some purple like food coloring or something. Like it was like you know. I told the I told the Welch well, grape juice story before, when you left. <laughs> when yeah. you when your phone went out, I told the Welch grape juice, oh, okay. juice story. There was a time I remember I worked uh, at this place in the valley. It was like a, I don't know, but it, there was there's a big construction place next to it, and once or like once every six months they would get like a big chain of like you know a hamburger or Mexican food, and all these construction workers would come in and eat for free, and I don't know why, but if you had colored hair in the '80s or you were punky or anything rocky, you know, rock and rolly. If you walk by a construction site, you might get you were getting called, you know, derogatory stuff, getting stuff thrown at you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So one day my boss was like, hey, you know what? <laughs> I dare you to go in the middle of that construction site over there with like, you know, 200 construction workers eating Tommy's burger for free. And you, you just go in there. Da -da -da. I'll call over there. I'll get your fucking burger because he knew the guy. And he goes, I want to see what happens. And the zeros were so fearless with our, with our colored hair. And like, we, you know, we're so true to who we were. I walked straight into that place and it, and it was all noise, 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 noise. And the second I walked in there, it was just silence. Walk in there, get my burger. I walked back I made it out alive. That was the zero, the zeros, like, you know, attitude, like, Nothing's going to stop well, us from being who we are. Let's hope that the zero's attitude continues. I think you guys are fine. You know, listen, we, we talked about it. That's good. You guys know how each other feels. No one has to be wrong or right. Nobody has to win. doesn't matter. The good thing is the fans win because they get to see that lineup. Next time you play the well, whiskey, I'm coming out. I got to see this. You know, the show, you the show was so great. The show was so great. And everybody loved the show so much. That it, it would be a shame for not for the band not to continue. Okay, right. it it just would. Okay, so that's just my theory on it. I think the band should continue. I'm willing to continue. But if, I'm if willing you see, to continue. If you see the band, if you see the band, if you see me, if there's different members and stuff, just just accept it. I mean, to really, you know, people who are you Don't know in this. Don't accept it if I'm not there. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. I'm not but, but, Sammy, yeah. you'll try. I mean, like, like the thing is, the thing is, I've been doing the zeros like constantly through the the first year of this band started till now, okay, with with everything. So, I mean, am I glad the band got back together? Yes. Am I? Am I? W do I wish the band will continue? Yes, I do. But, but you know, I just wanna, I just wanna inform everybody that you know, people got different lives and people doing different things, and and it just don't. Sometimes the timing just don't mix with other timing you know and, and you just gotta accept that so i thanks, did thanks but, for um, having us on here bro thank you guys yeah. it's a pleasure and we, you, like like we were saying people need to hear your story and and now go hear some music so we'll have all that in the description thank you guys thank you everyone for watching make sure you subscribe and make sure you see the zeros if they come your way who you know it's hard to keep it together these days you gotta support the band so thank you and, and four four three two one the zeros.com don't forget absolutely okay guys